Allora, siamo qui per i 25 anni di Images and Words con John Petrucci, chitarrista dei Dream Theater. Allora, intanto per cominciare, Images and Words, di cui ricorrono i 25 anni, un traguardo molto importante, è stato uno di quegli album che ha coniato probabilmente l'espressione progressive metal. Io ti chiedo se all'epoca, nel mente schiato questo disco, ha dell'impressione di avere tra le mani quella che sarebbe diventata una vera e propria pietra miliare, non solo del genere. Well, we were very young back then. I was half my age. It was 25 years ago. I was 25 when I made that. And I'll be 50 in July. Wow, I'm old. How'd that happen? Um, so so we, we were young. I mean, it was only our second album. We weren't really, we didn't know what it was going to do. You know, there wasn't a progressive metal scene. It didn't really exist. I mean, there was um, Fate's Warning, who we were, we were friends with, a band from Connecticut, a band uh, from Texas called Watchtower, who were very technical. And, Of course, there was Queensryche um, and Metallica was already doing their thing. But the, the prog bands like Yes and Genesis, it was almost like a separate thing. So there wasn't a prog metal scene. It didn't exist. So when we got together and we kind of put the two together, it wasn't, we didn't really know what it was going to be. It's just what it felt natural to us. It felt like the right thing to do. And, um, you know, obviously it turned into a full career and, and that album became, you know, really uh, important for us. But we, d- we didn't realize it back then. It just, we were just having fun being in the studio together and creating music together. We were happy to do that. C'è qualcosa che tu ricordi più di altre di quei mesi, di quei giorni, un istantaneo, un ricordo, un aneddoto? Um, well, the way that we... Uh, The, the whole album came about it, it was over a long period of time because there was between our first album and when we went into the studio with images we there was probably about a year and a half or so where we didn't have a record label we didn't have a singer we didn't tour we were just kind of like we had some day jobs um, teaching and doing whatever and then we'd have band practice at night and uh, the war started in the Middle East and it was kind of a weird time, you know. Um, so by the time we got some interest from a record label and, and we found James Labrie, you know, the first thing we did was this uh, a, a demo. We recorded a couple of the songs in David, David Prater's house and, you know, then showed the label and they were like, okay, cool, we'll sign you. And then By the time we got into the studio, we were just so happy and so hungry to be back in the studio. And it was it was cool just as a as a band, as as far as band camaraderie, because we all we rented a house that was pretty close to the studio. And we all lived in this house. And then we go to the studio during the day and record. And it was a really cool, cool time for us. In The Astonishing voi descrivete un mondo ambientato più o meno tra 300 anni in cui la ricchezza è in mano a poche persone a discapito di tutte le altre che stentano a uh, sopravvivere e dove l'arte è l'unico mezzo per veicolare un messaggio positivo e rivoluzionario. Quanto è effettivamente distante quel mondo dal nostro, quello attuale? What's happening here uh, in, in the world where things that people used to do are, are now done by robots and machines. I mean, you know, I always bring this example up like self-driving cars, right? Something we couldn't have imagined, but probably imagine that soon nobody will have to drive, right? And they'll just be self-driving cars. So my idea was, you know, what if art wasn't done by people anymore? It's like, oh, you know, yeah, computers can do it better. What would happen, you know? And, and that was the whole basis. So in, in, in the story of The Astonishing, that the world breaks down because without that that sense of expression you know people love to express themselves creatively whether it's through art music dance cooking whatever you know what would happen if that was gone like the world would just kind of be this desolate depressing place and so i wanted to show the power of music and and what a big effect it has on people and how important it is and in the story the character Gabriel is the one who has this gift of music which saves the uh, saves the world. 
So, it was all about the importance of music. Ok, parlavamo prima di, de, del fatto che siete sicuramente la band progressive metal più famosa al mondo. Eh, è così però che tu descriveresti Dream Theater? Ti va bene questa etichetta progressive metal? O pensi che possa, andarti anche, possa andarvi anche stretta? Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Because, you know, when we were younger, we were, we were fans of, like, we were big Yes fans. We loved Yes. And we loved Rush and Genesis and Zappa. And, and that's all, like, i guess considered Prague in so many ways, you know. But we were young enough, you know, we were, you know, I mean, we met when we were 18, so then we were like early 20s. And yeah, Metallica and Maiden and Priest and all this stuff. So we were big metal fans. So when we just put them together. So yeah, it's like progressive metal. It, it kind of makes sense. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> Ok, nel senso ti spiego perché um, volevo, quello che volevo chiederti è cos'è Progress per te oltre che come descriveresti la musica dei Dream Theater, se in questo senso o meno, perché molto spesso quello che io noto noi notiamo è che le persone tendono a confondere questo con la velocità di esecuzione di uno strumento e mi chiedevo se per te invece rappresenti più un'attitudine, un'intenzione il Progressive. Yeah, t- I mean, the now, you know, fast forward to today, there's so many different, like, offshoots of progressive music, right? There's more traditional and there's different metal and there's all these crazy versions. And, you know, sometimes when people call progressive, to me, doesn't sound progressive. So I don't know. I don't really know anymore. But I know from from our um, perspective, like when we would listen to a Rush song, like Hemispheres or something, or we would listen to, um, you know, close to the edge by yes you know the thoughts that we had were like like wow well you don't really have to follow any form song doesn't have to be three and a half minutes you know it doesn't have to keep repeating the chorus or hey we can have a guitar solo for like two minutes and then completely change to a whole mellow section and like this whole mindset that you can do whatever you want really it's like a it's a freedom so to me progressive music has this sense of freedom in style you can kind of do whatever you want you can put in any style of music if you want a little latin samba in there stick that in there you know you want to go to a crazy metal riff put that in there you don't want to repeat the chorus fine doesn't matter you know you want to end with a guitar solo Sure, why not? You want to start with a guitar? Like, there's no rules. That's what makes it progressive. So that, that could be in the form of being very technical or not. You know, I mean, like Pink Floyd is progressive. That's not very technical. But the, all those songs take you on this journey. You know, it's like, it's almost like storytelling in, in music. Or it's like, with The Astonishing, it's like scoring having a story and then scoring like you would to a movie the music so the music doesn't really it doesn't make any sense form wise just kind of follows what's happening as you're telling the story to me that's progressive music tornando a images and words uh, la mia curiosità quello che volevo chiederti è uh, qual è la canzone più difficile da suonare let's see probably uh, under a glass moon is, is pretty hard that's kind of a more up tempo thing has a crazy guitar solo in it yeah it's fun it's fun but um yeah that would be one of the harder ones e sempre di queste otto qual è la tua preferita invece which is my favorite uh i always like playing metropolis and the reason why is because it it has a very a very big sound to it like an epic sound to it and i think that's another part of of our particular sound that's something we've developed is this kind of large cinematic symphonic epic they call it like an epic sound and metropolis is one of the first songs where we did that where where as soon as we started it just has this kind of big glorious feeling to it and then it, it's a good example of combining metal because it has like that sort of tight metallica ish kind of riff to it But then it goes off. It's exactly what I was talking about before. The whole middle section is just so, kind of wacky, you know? It doesn't make any sense. And it's, 
to, that's exactly what I was talking about before. You can break the rules and do whatever you want. You know, go in the middle for three minutes, just go crazy, and then come back to the song at the end. So it, it, I think it has all of the elements that makes us who we are. So that's why it's the most fun to play. It, it has everything in it. Ok, voi sarete di nuovo in Italia anche qui a maggio, sempre con i 25 anni di Magis Awards. Mm, avete un grandissimo feeling con il nostro paese, con i vostri fan qui in Italia. Come ti spieghi questa connessione? Come è nata secondo te? You know, I'm not sure. I remember though from the first time, you know, when, when we, before Images and Words, we didn't tour at all. So when we did, when Dream Day Unite, we had never done an official tour. So when we released Images and Words, we finally started to play first in America. And then we came over here. And um, I remember very, very specifically playing in Rome for the first time. We had never been here before from America. And I remember playing the songs and people were singing so loud that I couldn't, it was almost like I couldn't hear what I was playing. And it was this sensation like the, for the first time as a performer that I got that kind of feedback from the audience where not only were they singing the melodies of the vocals, but they were singing the guitar parts. And I thought that was like crazy. I thought it was awesome. So I knew right away that there was this connection. It was right from the beginning. And then with my name being Petrucci, that was great too, because they were like, Petrucci. Um, and so there was a heritage for me personally. And so there was always this great connection. And, you know, I know that progressive music also had, had a, has a lot of roots here in, in Italy, you know, not only in the UK, but in Italy as well. So there seems to be this kind of acceptance right away of the style. And, and that's something that's lasted all this time. So it's been great. We always have fun coming to Italy. It's amazing. We really do. Ok, nel ringraziarti ti dico che ovviamente ti aspettiamo, vi aspettiamo in studio neanche a dirlo e ti chiedo anche un saluto per i nostri ascoltatori. Hey Italy, this is John Petrucci from Dream Theater and you're watching Radio Rock. <laughs> 